Hello, I'm Eric Renault, and this is a video for Photolia, the stock image website. In this video, aimed at absolute beginners to Photoshop, I'll be taking a look at the anatomy of Photoshop and finding our way around. Let's jump in and see how we get on. So here I am, I'm in Adobe Photoshop CC, which is the latest version of Photoshop. If you're using older versions, then there may be a slight difference in that it's a slightly different color, maybe a lighter gray. You may also find that this bar on the left hand side is actually two columns like this. Okay, let's put that back to how it should be. You'll also see that I'm using a Mac, which means I get an extra menu at the top there that says Photoshop in a Windows machine. That'll all be under file. But those should be the only differences. Okay, let's take a look around. Well, let's go back up to the top and there's a menu. And it works the same as any other menu. Lots of things that we can find here and hopefully you'll experiment with them as time comes on. You can also see next to different elements in the menu, you get these symbols. And this refers to a keyboard shortcut. So in this case, for adaptive wide angle, I would have to press Alt, Shift, Command and A, and then I would go into that filter. They're not all quite as long as that. We'll see some more in a little while. If you're going to be proficient and speedy in Photoshop, then keyboard shortcuts are going to become your friends. Maybe not adaptive wide angle, but certainly many, many others. OK, next I'm going to skip over the bit underneath the menu just for a second and take a look at the left hand side. And this is our toolbar. This is where all the tools for Photoshop are kept. And they're there for easy pickings. Now, if I go over this top one here, you'll see that this is the move tool. And if I hover over the top, it tells me what it is. And we get this V in brackets. And this tells me that V is the keyboard shortcut. Sure enough, down here for brush, or well, that's B. So if I press B now, you'll see that I go to brush and then V for the move tool. Using the keyboard shortcuts for the toolbar will really speed up your workflow. You may also notice in some of the tools that they have a little triangle in the bottom right hand corner. For example, the marquee tool, if I come over and click and hold, I get a fly out menu. Now I can choose one of the others from this fly out menu, like the elliptical marquee tool. Uh, that now becomes the current tool. If I move away from it, you'll see that it stays on the elliptical marquee tool until I go and choose another one from that flyout menu. I'm going to go back to the move tool. That's my kind of default tool. It helps me just to know where I'm at and move things around on screen. Now next in this toolbar, you'll notice that it's separated by horizontal lines. And this groups together some of the tools. At first glance, the tools may not look like a group. But if you've been using Photoshop for a while, you'll know that some things are just jimmied in where they kind of belong. And so it does fit, but it'll take some getting used to. For example, this first section, I would call it the selection tools. But in fact, we've got this lot of selection tools and this lot of selection tools and yet another third lot of selection tools. But the other ones in this group aren't selecting at all. This one, for example, is the crop tool. Underneath that, we've got tools that are just pixels. So they might clone, they might smooth, they might even erase, but they're all in that second group. In the group under that, these are tools that work with vectors. This is a mathematical way of drawing lines, and it's another subject all of its own, so I'll leave that for another video. Underneath that, they're tools for how you work. So we've got a move tool, for example, and a rotate tool. If you're using a tablet, it's very helpful to be able to rotate the canvas around. We're not rotating the picture on the canvas, but the canvas itself. So if I'm working with a pen, I can easily work comfortably. Let's go back to uh, zero. And I can also zoom in and zoom out using the magnifying tool as well. Then we have color swatches underneath that and more of those in just a second. But that's the foreground and the background colors that we would be using. Then we have the quick mask tool. Again, another video all of its own. 
And then finally, right at the very bottom, here we go, we've got the change screen mode, which has the keyboard shortcut of F. And I'll demonstrate these using the F key. There we go. And you can see it just alters our workspace. Okay, while I've been clicking on these tools, I'm going to go back to my move tool here. You may notice that the menu bar changes underneath the main menu. Now we call this a contextual menu because it changes depending on what tool I have. So for example, right now I'm in the move tool and several things are open to me. But if I come down to the brush tool again, you'll notice that I have a lot of settings for the brushes. So these things change as we pick each tool. It's going to be very helpful. If I go to the crop tool now, you can see I can actually put in the dimensions of the crop that I want to make. I'm going to go back to the move tool so I don't accidentally crop the image. Right, let's go over to the right hand side now and have a look at what we call panels. They used to be called palettes, but now they're called panels and they're where we find information and ways to speed up our workflow. So at the top here, you can see that I've got some swatches and I can click on those to change the colors that I have in my foreground and background. So if I come over here and just click on one of these colors, let's pick an orange. You can see there that my foreground color changed. Behind that, I've got the color panel and you can see now that I can alter the color using sliders. Okay, I'll go back to swatches. Now underneath that one, I've got adjustments and styles. And again, they're worthy of their own videos. So I won't go into too much detail now. And then underneath that, in another group, I've got layers, channels and paths. And we'll deal with those again in later videos. Now the beauty about Photoshop is that it works on layers. So let's take a quick look. If I come down to the bottom of the layers palette here, you see I've got a series of icons, one of which is the new layer icon. Now this icon comes up regularly in Photoshop and other Adobe products. And it doesn't always mean a new layer. It just stands for new something. Whatever you're doing, it's a new one of those. So because I'm in the layers palette, I know I'm going to be creating a new layer. So let's create a new one. And you can see that it puts it on top of my background layer and labels it layer one. I can do whatever I like on this layer. So I'm going to come across and get the brush. Of course, I could have pressed B, as we saw earlier on. And I'm going to paint with what I now have as a green brush on the sky here. Not very flattering, but there we go. Let's go back over to our layers panel. And we've got some more options open to us. On the right here, you see that I can reduce the opacity of this layer. So I can dull down that green. Let's bring it back up. Next to that is another extremely powerful feature of Photoshop, which is blend modes. If I click, you'll see a drop down menu. These blend modes work in different ways to each other, and they take some getting used to and a lot of learning, but they're well worth investigating. For example, multiply might be one of the ones you'd like to go to. You can see how it reacts differently with different colors and luminance values of the layer underneath. I can go to soft light. Again, it's going to be different and let's try one more. Let's try saturation, even different again. All right, I'm going to go and put that back to normal. And of course, I can always get rid of that because it's not actually affecting my underlying layer. So I'm going to click and drag, and I can put this in the recycle bin or trash can down the bottom, and that's gone. Now, there are some panels that you may find more useful than others, depending on what you're doing. For example, I like to have the history panel available. So if I go up to window and down to history, that panel now comes up and you can see all the things that I've already done to this image. But I don't really want it sat there taking up valuable screen resources. So I can place it alongside my other panels. I just click and carry it over and you can see that I can drop it down and put it with this one. And sure enough, if I click it, it opens up. Let's pull that away again. This time I'm going to go over and I'm going to drag it and I'm going to stop a little bit earlier. And you can see that blue line now goes alongside this panel. And I've made a new panel and I can collapse that one down should I wish as well, like this one. This one actually has the properties panel in it already. Let's bring that out and open it up. 
and then I'm going to take it down and I'm going to actually join it in with this existing group. And you can see that I get this blue line around this group of panels. If I drop it down, sure enough, there it is alongside layers, channels and paths. So it's there if I need it, but it's not obstructing me. Now, once I've got a workspace that I like, I can save that. I can go to Window, Workspace, and then I can say a new workspace and name it. You may have noticed that I've already done that. I've got a workspace called Tip Squirrel, which is my alter ego. So let's go over to the Tip Squirrel one and you'll see that I've changed it quite radically. I've got a lot more panels on this group here and there's my history along with my layers and channels, of course. But I like to have the navigator panel and the histogram available to me too. It really will depend on how you like your panels and what you're doing at the time. You may have noticed when I came up here that there were lots of others that were built in already. So if I was dealing perhaps with painting, I may want these panels that give me access to the brushes and the swatches. If I'm doing something like 3D, then I'm going to need more 3D panels available to me, the properties and the 3D and the layers, of course. Let me go back to my workspace. There we go. And I'm all back ready to work. So there we go. A quick introduction to Photoshop. I hope that gives you a bit of confidence to jump in and have a bit of a play. Remember, you can't do any harm to your image as long as you work on different layers. If you want to work on the image itself, then make a copy of it. That's quite simple. You can click on it and then press Control or Command and J for jump. That's how I remember it. And then you can work on that one. And your original image will always be pristine. Right, that's it. I'm off. My name's Eric Reno. Thank you very much for joining me here at Photolia. You can join me in a whole host of other places. I look forward to connecting with you there. But for now, Bye-bye.